Hello, thanks for being here. My name is Chrissy Hodges and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you've been here, just to let you know, I'm an advocate for OCD, in particular, Pure OCD, which is the community name for those of us that experience intrusive thought and mental, mental rituals. This is actually the name of my book, my memoir that talks about my lived experience with OCD. I'm a certified peer support specialist. I work with people all over the world to help normalize, um, help people feel less alone who are living with OCD. Also, it helps to reduce the shame and the stigma around some of those intrusive thoughts that can be really terrifying and really shameful. We also do referral consultations, so we can help connect you to resources and therapists all around the world to help get the treatment that you need if you are in a position to, ready, uh, to go ahead and get treatment for OCD. In OCD, NoCD is an app, but they also provide telehealth with ERP. And so if you wanna head on over there, if you're looking to get telehealth and you want to explore NoCD as an option, head on over to treatmyocd.com to find out more. And you, I believe you can sign up for assessment, an assessment right there. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I I'm uploading content almost every single week. I'm trying to do two videos a week, one longer video and then one shorter video, kind of a peer support tip of the week, which I was going to do last week, but had to take Ollie, my Frenchie, to the ER. <laughs> he was not doing well. He got really sick, a respiratory infection. And when you have the, the short snout dogs, it's it can get really scary really fast. So Friday I was in the ER all morning with him and then I slept all afternoon because <laughs> it was a very early morning. So anyway, uh, thanks again for being here. I like to talk about the topics for OCD that you don't really hear a lot about, more of the experience of having OCD, how that can impact you with your themes, but also the emotional side of it. So today I really wanted to talk about something that I had posted on Instagram yesterday. If you don't follow me already, head on over. I'm at Pure O Chrissy. And I, I was talking about how when you're engaging with OCD, basically what you're doing is engaging in a fight in your brain. And the best way for the, one of the solutions to stop the cycle of OCD is just to stop the fight. Now that might seem really simple and I'm not gonna just end the video right there. <laughs> I'm gonna talk a little bit of, about what, what I mean and what that feels like. The reason why I wanna talk about this is because sometimes we get so bogged down in what's going on in our head, we forget about the objective mechanism that's actually happening in the brain. Understanding that is not gonna make your symptoms go away, number one but it can help you objectively see what's going on, which can then help you make a little bit more of an informed choice about what to do if you don't want to do compulsions. If you haven't already, head over to ocdonline.com. It's Dr. Stephen Phillipson's website, and he has the article choice. It's 48 pages long, so it's not an article, it's a book. I just wish he would make it into a book already. And it talks in depth about what's going on in the brain. It talks about the mechanism piece and it also talks about uh, what, what to do in order to be successful in treatment. So it, when I read it, it just blew my mind. It helped me get a, a little bit more of an in-depth understanding about what's happening in the brain. So this is what this is what I mean when I say OCD baits us into a fight. Okay, so let's say your brain, you you ha this is how it happens for a lot of us. You know, it's you know, everything seems cool, you're not thinking about anything and then boom, all of a sudden you have this thought or this moment of panic or this moment of fear about oh my goodness, I just was staring at that kid and I thought she's cute and I just got this this thought that, um, what if you're a pedophile? And you become terrified, right? Well, what's happening right there is that you are you had an intrusive thought, which is a thought that's unwanted, it's terrifying, and you're having anxiety, you're having fear, you're having all these emotions connected to it, but your reaction, which usually happens right after compulsions, so mentally reviewing, ruminating, you might Google, reassurance seek, things like that, is alerting the part of your brain that is responsible 
of telling you and keeping you out of danger, the amygdala, Philipson talks about this, you're alerting that part of the brain that something is wrong. And its job is to keep you safe. So the moment you're telling that part of the brain something's wrong, it's going to react. And all of a sudden now, everywhere you look, you're gonna see kids, <laughs> right? Because you're saying, I'm in danger, I'm, I'm, I'm having fear, I'm scared, and it's, it's like, oh my goodness, you're having fear around kids, I'm gonna alert you of every kid within a five mile radius. <laughs> so now you see every child possible, <laughs> right? So what's happening is, what also happens in this is, the brain is just almost behaviorally mirroring back to you, well, are you a pedophile? Well, is this true? Is this really happening? And your response is, no, I'm not. And I'm gonna do compulsions to prove you wrong. Okay, see, you're in a fight now. The brain heard you say that you're in danger because of this. It's kind of telling you back that you are and you feel the need to defend yourself. And why wouldn't you? In real life, if you're hanging out with someone all of a sudden they're like, you damn pedophile, you'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> and you'd get in a fight with that person, right? And you would sit there and defend yourself. That's not who I am. That's not what, what you know, and you would fight. So now you're engaging in a fight in your brain. You're defending yourself to the part of your brain that you just told <laughs> there's danger to. <laughs> It's just repeating it back to you. It's just trying to support you and keep you out of trouble. <laughs> but yet now you feel like you have to defend yourself. And that's the loop we then become engaged in. I need to prove to my brain that this isn't true. So I do, I, you know, I'm going to do compulsions. And every time you do compulsions, you're almost doubling down with the amygdala that there's reason to believe we're in danger and it's gonna, it needs to protect you. So sometimes people go, I just don't understand. I'm getting these thoughts. I'm getting bombarded all the time, all the time. Well, that's because you're doing compulsions and your brain, it, it, it's this fight in between you and your brain. Let me tell you something. You're never gonna win. You're not gonna win the fight. Why? Because that part of the brain always wins because its job is to keep you safe. It will fight to the death. And you're, in my last breath on this earth, it'll probably be like, you like incest. <laughs> or didn't you wanna have sex with your dog? <laughs> like it'll still be saying that kind of shit. <laughs> but here's the thing, it, it always wins. And the reason why is because it, it's designed to keep us safe. So anytime we're engaging in this fight, it is going to scream louder. It is going to fight dirtier. It hits below the belt, the groinal. <laughs> so it's gonna do anything and everything to make sure that if you're telling it that something's wrong, it's going to do double that to protect you. When I say telling it that something's wrong, that means compulsions. When you're doing compulsions, you're communicating to your brain, we're in trouble, I need to figure this out. And then it, double the amount of time is gonna come back and keep warning you and that's the cycle. So, yes, so, so there's that. So here's, so this is what, it, it, this is a great analogy. So I'm, I typically don't like to refer to OCD as a bully. I don't like that because what that does is set, sets us up for uh, not being able to love ourselves and accept OCD as part of our life um, because then we're looking at it as this enemy and this monster that has to be defeated all the time and we don't want to do that. I can do a video about that uh, later. I may already have talked about it before. But this is a great analogy on how to stop the fight. I have two analogies. This is the first one. Okay, so you may have been bullied in school or if you haven't been bullied in school, um, it, what this is is a, a person who is just picking on people for no reason and if the bully targets you, okay, and the bully comes at you and says, you're ugly, you're stupid, your mom is a hoe, whatever else, our immediate our immediate reaction is, of course, defense, right? So think about this when it comes to the brain. You're a pedophile. My immediate defense to my brain is, oh my gosh, no, I'm not. And I'm going to show you why. I'm mentally reviewing. See, there's nothing in my past. Or what if there is something in my past, right? Compulsions. So with the bully, the first thing I'm going to do is be like, no, I'm not ugly. I'm not stupid. My mom is not a hoe. You know, whatever it's, whatever it's saying, my first order of business is to defend myself. No, I'm not. 
boom, the bully wins. The moment the bully gets you to interact, the bully wins. You're engaging in the fight that the bully wants, right? So the way to shut down the fight with the bully is to be like, to, to, to drop the defense. Okay, I, I am ugly. I am stupid. I don't want to say my mom's a hoe. <laughs> She's done. She's done. <laughs> so we'll just leave that out. That's horrible. But anyway, I, you know, it's just a drop, drop defending yourself and go, yeah, okay, you're right. Everything you say is right. Well, then you're not engaging in the fight and the bully is not getting what he or she wants. So then the fight ends. The bully might get louder, you know, and it might get nastier, kind of like the amygdala does. Might fight dirty, right? Might say things even more to try to get us to react. But our job is, I, I don't want to fight with him because there's no reason to fight with this idiot because he's not going to stop. And at the end of the day, all he wants to do is win. So let him win. Okay, everything you say is right. I don't care. Now, easier said than done, right? You got a bully screaming in your face about everything wrong with you. The moment they hit something that's vulnerable is the moment you get emotionally engaged. What does that sound like? OCD. People all the time say, well, I get intrusive thoughts about this and this and this, but then once it, once it attacked my kids, then it was just, I couldn't resist. I, I started engaging. Once it, you know, attacked, attacked my sexuality, then I had to get right. Because those are areas where we're vulnerable. Those are areas that we feel like we have to defend. So we engage. This is OCD. This is the relationship with OCD. Right? It, it's that back and forth fight. And once OCD hooks us with something, you know, or that intrusive thought we get is hooked with an emotion and then OCD reacts, it doesn't matter what comes first or second. None of that matters. It's just the mechanism and we're vulnerable and we feel the need to fight back. Boom, you're done. You're in the fight and you're not going to win because OCD always wins. And if you let the bully, they'll always win if you keep fighting with them. So that's what I mean when I say stop the fight. It's so hard to stop the fight, especially when it's personal. Of course I wanna defend myself if my brain is telling me I'm capable of murder or I'm a psychopath or you know that I'm capable of despicable sexual acts. Of course I wanna defend myself. But right then, you're engaging with the fight. So fighting, not fighting back means not doing compulsions, not allowing that emotional hook to take you into a spot where you feel like, oh my gosh, I have to do something about this. I can't sit with this. Now, when you're in, many of you may be in a spot right now where you're like, Chrissy, this it's all day, every day for me. It's 24 seven. I don't even know where to begin. Well, in, in exposure response prevention therapy, uh, um, I used this analogy earlier today, um, or not analogy, but kind of a description. It's, you know, we get scared of ERP because we're afraid we're gonna do the therapy, it's not gonna work. We're afraid we're gonna do the therapy, it's gonna prove the thoughts are real, yada, yada, yada. Those, those. But, but what happens is if you're at that space or if you've been at that space, your world gets really small right? So that, that's, that's the thing. When you start engaging in this fight and all that happens in your life is you're fighting these thoughts, you're fighting your brain, your world gets really small. It's all you have time for. It's all you ever do. So in getting treatment, the goal is to make your world big again. It, it's to start exposing yourself to the things that have gotten you to the point where you're so afraid you don't want to move that you're so afraid you can't leave the house. You're so afraid you can't see people, you can't watch TV, you can't do anything anymore. That's what ERP is. We, we are so scared of the exposure piece of it because we're scared of what we're gonna find out. But what we're really doing is pushing our world back open. You know, I was not scared of, of going to Walgreens ever until I got an intrusive thought when I was in Walgreens one day and then I stopped going to Walgreens. 
And you know what? Sometimes I got to go to Walgreens and I got to get, you know, antacids and I got to get this and I got to get that, but I can't go now because I'm scared of it. Well, that makes my world smaller. So the goal is that has nothing to do with the theme, right? This is where they, we say the themes don't matter, even though I know that they're personal and they do matter to us. The themes aren't related to Walgreens, <laughs> right? Walgreens is Walgreens. The goal is I have to start going back to Walgreens and opening up that part of my life again. I can't keep avoiding it. And the first few times is going to be really hard because I'm going to go in there, hold my breath, hoping I don't have anxiety, right? I'm not going to engage in this fight anymore that Walgreens is bad because I need to go to Walgreens. That's ERP, right? Just pushing in, stopping the fight, going into Walgreens. Maybe I go for seven days a week straight and, and go to the aisle where I had the panic attack and show my brain, I ain't fighting about this anymore. You win, right? You win. That's what we want to do. OCD really does instill so much fear that we become almost paralyzed. And we got to start moving again. We've got to start pushing in again. We've got to push out and get our world back because what's going to happen is you're going to push back and find out there was nothing to be afraid of to begin with. So last analogy, um, and this is such a good one, and, and this really opened my eyes. If you're on social media, are you on social media? If you're not, if you've ever been, or if you're not, you don't know what I'm talking about, you, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Have you ever been there and you just make a comment on something and then someone comes back at you and, and, and tries to fight with you? Well, it's public. <laughs> All these people can see that so-and-so called me on this and I think they're wrong. Okay, right there you've engaged, right? Well, I'm going to have to defend myself on social media. You don't know who this damn person is. They could be a troll. No one even knows. But you think... Well, I have to, and why would they say that? And I'm right, fuck this person, right? So here you go. I'm gonna engage in this fight that means nothing. But I mean, I'm not saying, that, I'm not criticizing because I do it. <laughs> you get in and all of a sudden you're like, oh really? Because da, 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 da. And you explain your whole logic. That person doesn't care. They only care about winning. So here they are. You get that notification an hour later. And during that hour, you're like, are they going to respond? What are they going to say? And what am I going to say? And fuck them and whatever. So then you get the notification and boom, you go on and there's their logic. And then they call you stupid. <laughs> and you're like, well, I'm going back in. And he so here you are engaging in a fight that means nothing. This idiot, you don't even know who they are. And here you are feeling like you have to defend your life to them. And it takes up your whole fucking day, right? But here, and, and then you have anxiety about it. And when are they going to respond? And what are they going to say? And, and it, this could go on. This will go on as long as you let it. That's the key. Walk away. You don't want to walk away, do you? Because a random stranger in the world is trying to prove you stupid on social media. So I don't want to walk away. I need to defend myself Okay, well, then you're going to be miserable for however long that fight goes on because that person isn't stopping. Just walk away. Be like, okay, I guess I'm stupid. <laughs> and turn off the computer. It's that easy, but it's that hard. So think about that in relation to what's going on in your brain. You do not have to defend yourself to your brain. It, my, my brain could scream all day to me. You're a pedophile, you're a pedophile, you're a pedophile. And it could be like the groinal could be on fire right now. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just not going to engage. I'm not always a proponent for agreeing with the brain either. So it, it, it's whatever works best for you. But and not engaging in the fight would just be being going, okay, I hear what you're going to say. I hear what you're saying today. And um, believe that if you want. You know, I, I just, this isn't a fight I'm going to engage in today. If you want to believe that I'm a pedophile, fine. So 
I'm just dropping the argument. I'm not engaging in it. Now, trust me, kind of like the social media, there's this, I want to, <laughs> I want to defend myself and engage in it, but I already know the outcome. Just like on social media, I already know if I put one comment, this is going to go on and on and on for the next two days. And I'm going to be, or as long as I choose to engage and I'm going to be exhausted and then I don't even know this person and who cares. Try to use that with your brain. Look at it that way. Now, again, I'm not providing therapy here. I'm not providing any sort of, um, any, any sort of advice on how to do ERP. I just wanted to explain it this way because this really helped me to conceptualize what was going on in my brain. It's really hard to understand the mechanism of, of your brain when you're in it and it feels so real. But when I'm out of it and can look objectively and I see this going on and I can compare it to things in real life, it helps so much. It's not gonna make things symptoms go away and it's not gonna make you, excuse me, feel better. But what it can do is help you make in more informed choices. Sometimes we just don't have the energy or the capability to not argue back. I get that. I am guilty. I, there are some days I'm like, I'm gonna ruminate all day. <laughs> and then some days I'm, I'm in a position where I'm like, okay, I can hear this screaming at me over here, but I ain't engaging. I got, I got too much to do. Or I make that informed choice. So I just wanted you to remember that today. This is a fight in your brain, A, that you can't win. Because the amygdala never stops fighting, just like the bully and just like the troll on social media. They are always going to respond. They're always going to try to get the last word. In fact, they are going to get the last word. You get to choose to let them and to be okay with them having the last word. I hope this helped. I hope it didn't confuse you even more. <laughs> But sometimes hearing things like this can help take us out of our brain and see a little bit about what's going on. So um, I may try to jump on on Friday, do a really quick video elaborating on this, or if you have questions or anything, throw them in the comments and I'll, I'll, I'll try to address those on Friday. It'll probably be a little bit later in the afternoon or even early evening. So um, yes, thanks for being here. I hope that all of this makes sense. I'm so sorry that we have to go through this. I'm sorry that this is how our brain operates, but... I hope that you know just by being here that you're not alone and that so many people out there completely understand what you're going through and you are not a monster and you are not a freak. You are just a person living with OCD. So thanks again. If you need or if you're looking for services, peer support or referral consultation, check out down in the description or you can go to my website at chrissyhodges.com and I will see you hopefully on Friday.